Hi, I'm Scotty. I service, repair and restore vintage and antique mechanical clocks. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. In this video, I explain how to rebush a clock movement. Right, we're ready to start rebushing our Korean 31 day movement clock. We'll start off with the first wheel on the strike side, that wheel there. Which we know goes into that hole there because we've marked it with a felt tip pin. First thing we do, we have to measure the diameter of the pivot. 1.43 mil. So, I write that down. One point four three. Now I need to find out what size bush we need to fit the one point four three mil pivot. So we have a look down here. One point four three, number forty seven. is 1.40, 48 is 1.50, so it's obviously too big. So we'll take out a number 47. Number 47 bush. Pop that in our tray. Lid back on again so we don't lose them. First thing we do always is put the bushing in our hand and try to fit the pivot into it just to make sure we've got the correct size and it doesn't fit. Right. Put the wheel aside. We've got the diameter of the pivot and it was a number 47 version bush. So we'll write that down, 47. Then we'll read along here, see what we've got. The outside diameter is 3.50 mil. Drop that down. And there. And that's our data for this bush. Number 47 version, the pivot is 1.43 mil. The external hole we're going to have to ream out is 3.50 to fit the bush in. Best to write it down, saves you forgetting it and reaming it out to the wrong size and having to start again. First piece we want is our center finding piece. Pop that into our machine. Tighten it down. Put a base on it. Now we put the plate, remember, that's the one there we're looking at. Onto the machine and drop the center finding tool into the hole. Spin it round to make sure we've got it centered. Then we'll put our clamps on. Clamp it down. Hold it in place. You can only clamp it once, that clamp can't fit. But we'll remove our center finding tool. And 
and 3.50 is our final size. So I'll put the first reamer in, which is 2.47. When you're reaming out large holes in a clock movement plate, it's better to start a couple of sizes down. Less stress on the, on the cutter and it won't take you near as long to ream the hole out. But we're ready to start. Pressing down. Gently on the top of the reamer, we then start turning the handle slowly, not too much pressure on it. Every so often, you let the reamer up and wipe the swarf off it. Put it down again and feel that starting to bite a bit deeper now. So it won't be long before that goes through. And there it goes. That's 2.47 mil hole we've now drilled in that. Now we put the 2.97 mil reamer in. and repeat the operation. Pressing down lightly, turning the handle, removing the swarf as we get some. It's gone through rather easily. Take the 2.97 out. This is our final reamer, 3.47. which is three hundredths of a mil smaller than the external diameter of our bush and it's that friction that holds the bush in place once again push down clean the rim up and there it goes through Take the reamer out. And put a hammer punch in. Using a pair of tweezers. Pick up the bush. Making sure that the, the oil sink, which is the dint you can see there, goes from the back of the plate to the outside. Place it into the hole, a little just fit, like so. Our ball peen hammer, we lower the hammer on the top and a couple of light taps on the machine to make sure that the bush has gone in straight, not at an angle. Then a couple of solid taps to drive it home. There we have the new bush, it now has to be reamed out to fit the size of the pivot. Now take up the wheel, look at the pinion in the pivot and we'll see that it doesn't fit, which is exactly what we want. 
Right, now we have to broach the hole out till it fits the pivot. So we need to check Need to check our brooches, see what size we've got. It's going to be too big. Yep. Down a size. That's the size we're looking for. Now we fit the brooch into a pin vise. And now we're ready to start broaching out the hole. Place the brooch into the hole. When we're broaching out, the hole has to go perpendicular through the bush. We don't want it at an angle. So to make it a little bit easier, we align the brooch with the posts while we're turning it. And that gives us, if we keep those parallel, we'll be moving in the right direction. Slowly turn the brooch. you've done that check the wheel getting a little bit close up but not quite yet so we need the next size up so where's the next size up try that one Yep, we'll use that one for the next part of it. Put the brooch into the pin vise, tighten it up. Brooch back into the bush again. Align it. And very slowly twist it round, bearing in mind that these five-sided brooches cut very, very efficiently and it's very easy to take too much out. Right, we'll try the pivot again, see what we got. And it fits in. Okay. Relatively tight, which is what we want. So we'll leave that for the moment. We'll bush the top plate, then put the two together, and then check them out. That's the bush we're going to do this time. That one there on the top plate. Put that aside for the moment. Check the diameter of the pivot that fits into the top plate, 1.35 mil. Drop that down on our notebook. One point three five. Have we got our bushings? Number forty six is one point three, forty seven is one point four zero, so that should be too big. We'll take out a number forty six and try it.
We're into our dish. Top of the box on again. As always, push onto our palm. And try to fit whoop, the pivot into it. It doesn't fit. So that's the size we want. Push aside, put the pivot aside. Back to our version box again. Number 46, outside diameter, 3 mil. Drop that down. Number 46, 3.0 mil. First one we've done, we've crossed it out so we don't duplicate it. Now we're on to the second one. Remove the hammer tool and the bushing machine and put in the center finding piece again. And align the pivot hole, tighten that down, this time we will get both clamps, check it once again to make sure it's going in, not touching that wheel there, spinning freely, all right. Be careful of this wheel here with the gathering pallet on the other end of it. So that'll be a 2.97. So we'll go down to 1.97 mil for our first reaming. Push that up. Tighten it off. Now press down on the bushing machine, little bit of pressure and slowly turn the handle and start reaming that hole out. Back to it's an old bushing unit. Turning as it cuts its way through slowly, don't press too hard or the torque will twist the reamer and at 50 bucks a time you can't afford to lose too many of them. You can feel it's starting to bite in now so I back off a little bit lighter. Here we go, it's through. Remove the reamer, 2.47 the next reamer, this is our second one, into the machine, tighten it off, lower it into the bush, start turning. You can feel it biting pretty quickly, and through it goes. Remove the reamer, 2.97 is the final reamer, we'll broach out to 3mm, hold the plate, turn the handle, and complete the hole.
Take the reamer out. Put the hammer tool back in again. Tighten him down. Pick up our bush. Throw it over the top of the hole. That hammer tool is too wide, it's going to hit that wheel. So we'll take that out. Replace it with an X size down, we'll check that. We might actually have to go down to the third side, see what we got. Yep, still going to catch. Take him out. Down to the smallest size. Test it. Yep, okay. Ball pin hammer again. Couple of light taps. To make sure the bush is driving in straight. Then a little bit more. Okay. Take the hammer tool out. Undo the clamps. And remove the plate. Now take up the plate. Try to insert. And it just fits. We may not have to broach that by the look of it. Right, let's check the fit. First wheel goes in again, the bottom plate. Top plate on. Align the posts. Pivot goes there. That one goes there. Spinning pretty freely. Right, let's check if there's any movement in the bush. No, nope, that's nice and tight. This side, a bush there. Nope, lovely. Check a friend play. You can see it moving backwards and forwards there. Alright, that's the first one. Right, I'll complete the rest of the bushing, then we'll come back, then we'll put the movement together and get it up and running. Right, that's our new wheel. Let's have a look at the pivot. That one there. No shaking in that. Back one. In the wheel. Then, as always, check the wheel for end play. We move it sideways. Get 
you can see it moving in and out there. The pivot in the bushing. It's running nice and smoothly. That's the first bushing finished.